Hi guys, welcome to Techie DIY. In today's video, I'm going to look at the Sane Smart 3018 Prover. This is a three axis mini CNC, which is supplied as a partially assembled kit. The two frame sections are pre-assembled and the remaining assembly consists of bolting the frames together and installing the wiring. The printed instruction manual is very good and it covers the assembly of the kit and the software installation. Parts are labeled and referenced in the manual and the tools needed to build the kit are also supplied. The frame is made from 2020 and 2040 aluminium extrusion, along with aluminium front and back plates. The axes are driven by 8mm lead screws and NEMA 17 stepper motors. Support is provided by 8mm rods and linear bearings. The table is one piece of aluminium measuring 300 by 180 mm and the effective milling area of the CNC is 260 by 155 by 34 mm. The Z-axis assembly is a 3D printed unit with the usual 775 type spindle motor operating at 24 volts DC. It has an ER11 collet for 3.175 mm or 1 8 of an inch bits. The stepper motors and spindle motor are connected to a controller PCB. This is a Gerbil based controller. Gerbil is open source firmware that inputs GCO commands and controls stepper and spindle motors. Gerbil runs on the ATmega 328P processor on the controller board. Installed version is 1.1F and it's been pre-configured for this machine. On the PCB there is a power switch, DC power socket and a USB connection for a computer. The USB connection makes use of a CH340 USB serial port chip and so the computer will need to have a CH340 driver installed. There is also a connection for an offline controller. This can be used to control the machine directly instead of connecting it to a computer. The kit is supplied with a micro SD memory card and USB reader. This is used to transfer G code files from a computer to the offline controller. It also contains copies of the manual, software, configuration and example G code files. One thing to note is that the offline controller does not function in the same way as a pendant. It cannot be attached to the CNC at the same time as the computer. There are also connections for the stepper motors, spindle motor, an emergency stop switch, a probe for automatic Z axis height setting and limit switches. Limit switches are installed on all three axes. They're used to prevent the axes moving beyond their physical limits and also for homing, which automatically sets the axes to a repeatable zero position. The limit switches are connected to the control circuit via optocouplers and so are the stepper motor drivers. The drive current for each stepper motor is preset, but it can be changed by adjusting the potentiometer. The final set of connections are for a laser module, which is not included. The power supply is a brick type with a C8 figure of 8 input connector. It's suitable for 110 or 240 volts input and it has a 24 volt 5 amp DC output. Moving on to the build, starting with the Y axis base. First the nut mount is attached to the table using M6 16mm bolts and then the cable tie is cut from the linear bearing. Wire holders and limit switches are attached to the frame using M3 5mm set screws. Once they're installed, the operation of the limit switches is checked. Rubber feet are installed on each corner of the base. Limit switches and wire holders are also installed on the gantry. Snap-in nuts are installed into the sides of the Y-axis base. And the acrylic tool is used to space them correctly. The 
gantry is now offered up to the base and attached with M5 14mm bolts. The collet is installed into the collet holder. And the spindle motor installed into the motor holder on the Z axis. The controller is mounted onto the gantry frame using M3 8mm set screws and T nuts. The T nuts turn and lock as they're tightened. Next, the acrylic side plates are attached to the frame using M5 10mm bolts and T nuts. That's the basic mechanical construction finished. Now we move on to the wiring, starting with the limit switches. First the x-axis limit switch cables are plugged in. Then the y-axis limit switch cables. and the z-axis limit switch cables. Next the stepper motor cables, starting with the x-axis and then the y-axis and the z-axis. The spindle motor cable is installed followed by the stop switch Now we move on to the cable management using the nylon braided tube and attaching the wiring to the cable holders with cable ties.
Next, the Z-axis height probe is plugged in, followed by the offline controller. The power supply is plugged in. The stop switch is pushed in to disable the machine and turned to enable it. The depth of the height probe target is measured and then using the USB card reader, the micro SD card is connected to a computer. The probe.txt file is edited and the G92 command is changed to the measurement that we took from the probe target. The G0 command can also be set to a lower value. The micro SD card is now inserted into the slot on the offline controller and the power switch turned on. The offline controller screen should now be visible and the step size selected with the step key. The arrow key should now move or jog the axis in the correct directions. Changing the step size changes the distance the axis moves each time. The select key moves between the menu items and enter selects the menu item. Selecting the home menu item initiates the homing cycle This sets the home position to the bottom left and the z-axis to the top. Selecting the probe command starts the z-axis height probe. The z-axis zero point will be set to the base of the z-axis probe target. Spindle can be turned on and off. And there are also commands to zero the X and Y axis, zero the X, Y and Z axis. Reset Gerbil, you might need to do this if you enable one of the limit switches. And to exit the menu, press and hold the enter key. To lubricate the lead screws, I use white lithium grease. The kit includes four hold downs to secure the workpiece to the table. You can replace the screws with wooden blocks to help prevent damage to the table surface. The micro SD card includes some G-code examples, so let's try a couple of those. First, the job keys are used to touch the bit down onto the top surface of the workpiece, using a piece of paper to indicate when the bit just touches the surface. The X, Y and Z positions are then zeroed. And as a precaution, the z-axis is moved up to a safe height. The enter key is held down until the main menu appears. The file menu is selected. The g-code files are identified by a .nc file extension. Let's try the SaneSmart example. The SaneSmart file is selected. And then the g-code file is sent to the machine by pressing the enter key. After a bit of a cleanup, this is what it looks like. For the next example, the z-axis height is set with a height probe. The x and y axis are zeroed. The 
the wheel G-code file is selected and sent to the machine. A spoil board is a temporary surface that is attached to the table with T-nuts and bolts. This helps prevent damage to the table and allows you to screw, glue and tape workpieces to it. They're normally made from MDF but I'm just using some spare chipboard. For the next project I'm going to use a log slice and attach it to the spoil board using the tape and glue method. Painter's tape is applied to the spoil board and to the bottom of the log slice. Activator is sprayed to the workpiece side and CA mitre adhesive to the spoil board side. The workpiece is pressed down onto the adhesive and it forms a very strong, almost instant bond. Next we need to turn our designs into G-code. For that we use CAD software. There are lots of options available, but a good choice to start with is Easel from Inventables. You just need to sign up and then access the application from the Inventables website. This is the screen you're presented with when you start a new project. First select the measurement units. Then the machine work area. Then material dimensions. And the bit size. I'm using a 1.4mm bit to give a reasonable level of detail. Next we select the custom tab under cut settings and enter a feed rate of 400 millimeters per minute, 120 millimeters per minute plunge rate and half a millimeter depth per pass. Now let's import an image with image trace. Set the cut depth. Select the shape tab, change the size and the position. Now let's draw a circle around the outside by selecting the circle shape, changing the position and the size. From the cut tab, change the depth of cut and the cut path to cut on path. Now we can give the project a name, simulate the job to see how long it will take. So this will take 1 hour and 10 minutes. Now we can export the G code by going to Machine, Advanced, Generate G code and export G-code. I'm going to use the 1.4mm bit from this set. Zero the Z-axis and send the G-code from the offline controller.
So those are some of the examples of what the 3018 Prover can do using the offline controller. In part two, I will demonstrate the PC software installation, configuration and operation. Overall, the machine is very nicely put together. It's a bit more expensive than basic 3018 machines, but it uses good quality components. It has excellent documentation and some enhanced features such as aluminium front and back plates, limit switches, an emergency stop switch and an offline controller. The controller is loaded with Gerbil 1.1, which means it can be used with the latest versions of open source software without having to perform an upgrade procedure. SaneSmart provides technical support and there is a Facebook user group where you can ask for help and look for inspiration. The limitations of the machine in common with other 3018 machines are the working area, which limits the size of the workpiece, and the spindle power, which increases the time taken. However, it is capable of milling a surprising range of materials, such as wood, acrylic, printed circuit boards and aluminium. Overall, I'm happy to recommend the 3018 Prover. It's a good low cost entry level machine on which to learn about CNC machining. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.